I recently realized that we haven't really been putting our five minute sonar videos on our YouTube page. My bad. We're going to start putting them on there about every week just to start building that library up, that section of our YouTube channel at Core Ultrasound. Now, some of these videos are going to be a little bit on the old side, but if they haven't been updated, it either means that number one, the data is still good in them, or number two, I just haven't had time to get around to it. So we're slowly going through these and we're updating these, but we really want to share with you all, all those five minute Sona videos that we have. Now, briefly, if you don't know what they are, what our five minute Sona videos are, are really quick, just short lectures around five minutes, most of them are five minutes or less, where we kind of just show you the basics of how to do a specific examination. We're not going to talk about every scenario. We're not going to talk about all of the evidence, when to use it. We're going to assume that you already want to use this and you just want a refresher or a quick primer on specifically how to do that examination. So check out the video and let me know what you think. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about exactly how I scan the lungs. I mean, the lungs are something that I'm most obsessed with. Now, side note, if I ever got stuck on a desert island and I had to choose one ultra examination, hands down, I would choose the echo. That thing saves lives the fastest, it, the ones that change the management the most, but the one that I like personally is lungs. So naturally, I talk about it a lot. And if you look at my website, the videos that I have on there, the one that's the most extensive is the pulmonary section. So I've had quite a few people at the conferences that I teach at and through email asking me exactly how I take that probe and put it onto the patient. So the first thing I wanna talk about is exactly which probes I used to scan. Now, if you're looking for a pneumothorax, you should probably use a linear probe. It's gonna give you the best looking image. If you need to, you can use the curved linear probe as second line, but the linear probe is still the best in my opinion. And the phase rate transducer, I've actually been able to see lung sliding pretty easily with that, but it's gonna be third place and a distant third place as far as the best thing for a pneumothorax. Now, as far as the other ultron examinations, when I was in residency, the machines that I learned on, we only had linear and phase rate transducers. So I would use the phase rate transducer for everything else. So pulmonary edema, pneumonia, subpleural consolidations, things like that. I would just use a phased array. And initially I taught to just use that phased array. But in my second or third year residency, we acquired a couple of other ultrasound machines and we got a curvilinear transducer. I started using that and I would by far suggest a curvilinear transducer when evaluating the lung. I know some people talk about the footprint being an issue, you know, like you'll get more rib shadows and stuff, but the higher frequency of that curvilinear transducer makes the images so much better. So I'd recommend the curvilinear transducer for everything other than a pneumothorax. If you don't have a curvilinear transducer, the phase array transducer works just fine. So as far as actually performing a comprehensive examination, a good place to start would be to look at the blue protocol. It's done by basically one of the, I guess you'd call them creators of lung ultrasound, which is Daniel Lichtenstein. It's really good. He's an ICU doctor, it's very thorough but sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to do it all down that algorithm. So what I do basically is I take a patient and I ask myself what is most likely going on. So I basically make a one, two, three most likely diagnosis. And this is of course somebody that comes in shortness of breath. If the patient, I think they're likely having pneumothorax, I'm definitely gonna start looking for pneumothorax. If I think they have pneumonia as their primary thing, I'm definitely gonna start looking for pneumonia first. And once I've decided what I think my most likely pretest probability diseases are, I will scan the lungs kind of in that order. I'm gonna take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. So if I think that the most likely diagnoses in my particular patient are a pneumothorax or pulmonary edema, I'm gonna start in the anterior fields because that's where you're more likely to see it if it's actually gonna be abnormal. So for both of those things, if you wanna know specifics about what they look like, I would go to those specific videos, but I just wanna show you how I actually place a probe on the patient. So this particular person, this is my ultrasound fellow, so a lot of places talk about your patient actually needing to lay flat while you're doing this. And when you're looking for a pneumothorax, it's probably a good idea for them to lay, you know, maybe a 30 degree angle or flat. But if you have a patient that comes in, let's say you say they have cardiogenic pulmonary edema, so they have a 
HF exacerbation, they're not going to like laying flat. They're going to want to sit upright. And what you do is you basically have the probe in an upright orientation, the probe marker facing up, and just start looking at the anterior chest like this. So remember your four zones that Volpicelli has, just kind of go through that. Now, the reason I usually have the probe facing upright is because I like knowing where the pleura is in relationship to the ribs. And that way I don't confuse subcutaneous emphysema for an actual pleural line because I'll see that that white line is above the ribs. Now, if you need a little bit of review on that, go to the pneumothorax video. Now, if I think the most likely etiology of my patient's shortness of breath is either pneumonia or a pleural effusion or a PE or something like that, I'm usually going to start in the posterior region of the thorax or back here. The reason why is that pneumonia is usually going to start in the more dependent portions of the lungs. Pleural effusions are going to be more easily visualized here. And I usually actually have my patients sit up. So I'll put the bed rails up and I'll have them hold on to the bed rails to make sure to evaluate this back area right here. Now, this is specifically for pneumonia, pleural effusion, subpleural consolidations, things like that. So I'll start back here. And notice my grip here. I have a pencil grip and I'm using my pinky to brace myself on the patient to know how hard I'm pushing. And so that I have more control over the transducer. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll identify the most inferior portion of the thorax. So right here, you see Ben's left kidney right here. And then over here, we have a pleural line with some A-lines. So this is basically where his diaphragm sits and the most inferior portion of his thorax. So I'll start here because that's where pathology is most likely to be present. So I'll kind of look there. And once I found my most inferior border, which is about right there, then I'll just kind of lawn more back and forth along the intercostal plane like this. And notice this whole time, if you look here, my orientation of the transducer is changing. So I'm not just keeping it transverse and going all the way there. I am making sure that the transducer always stays at a 90 degree angle to the skin, remembering that the thorax is kind of like a cylinder almost. So make sure that you always keep 100% contact with a transducer head with the skin. So I'll just lawn more back and forth, back and forth, looking at this white pleural line right here and looking for any defects. Now, right there, I'm gonna pause it. Right here, this right here is actually the transverse process of the spine. So that is going to be kind of the medial border when I'm looking at the lungs. So I'll go between here and out to when I'm underneath the scapula, I'll go out to the posterior axillary line and then back and forth. And these are just kind of arbitrary just regions that I do when I'm scanning the lungs. Now, when you get up a little bit higher, the little area where you're going to be able to evaluate is less because the scapula gets in the way. So right there, the scapula is in the way. So you just kind of lawn more in that little area right there, just back and forth, back and forth. And you go up until you don't see pleur anymore. And you can see that the lungs actually go fairly high up, higher than you might think. And I've actually, on a couple of occasions, found pneumonias that I only were able to find back here. I have Ben's shoulders kind of hunched forward. He's got his arms crossed, and that kind of moves the scapula a little more out of the way, making it easier for you to visualize a little bit more of that pleura. And then when I'm done looking at the more posterior segments, I'll have the patient place his arm on his head or above his head and basically do the same thing from the posterior axillary line to the anterior axillary line. So I'm going to pause there and put a little bit of jelly. So same thing. I basically find the most inferior portion of the lungs, find that line and then lawn more back and forth in between the ribs. Now, when I'm doing this, I usually have the probe marker facing up towards the patient's head, focusing on this pleural line right here. And all I'm looking for is any defects in that pleural line. Do I see that nice wide straight line or do I see something else? Now let's say, I'm gonna fast forward here. Let's say that right about here, I find an abnormality in that pleural line and I wanna focus in on that little abnormality a little bit more. At that point, I'll rotate my probe. It doesn't matter if it's left or right as long as it makes sense to you. I'll rotate that probe so that that beam is now slicing in between those two ribs and then I'll fan back and forth in between that pleural space. So right there, I'm in between the ribs, just fanning that, just looking at that pleural space. And then once I'm there, I will just kind of fan up and down beneath that pleural space, looking at whatever little defect right about I saw there. So right there. So you can think about it when I'm transverse like this, when I'm kind of doing my scanning and I'm in this orientation, I'm going back and forth and I found that you can evaluate multiple wrist spaces. So here's a wrist space, here's a wrist space, here's a wrist space. And then if I actually find something, so a pattern that I know is abnormal, so not this pleural line, 
Then I'll go ahead and turn it transverse so I can focus in on that defect a little bit clearer. So the way I think about it is that when I have my ultra transducer in a coronal or sagittal orientation or the pro marker up, it's like the coarse tuner in the microscope. And I'm just looking for any differences in that pattern of that white pleural line. So do I see anything at the pleural line other than that bright white line? Then if I identify something, I'm gonna turn on the fine tuner, which is turning my ultra transducer in a transverse orientation like so. So there's sagittal or coronal, and then there's transverse. So you can see I'm fanning within that intercostal space right there. Hopefully that was helpful for you all. I can't wait to hear from you soon and happy scanning.